As football evolves and player roles continue to shift, more and more importance has been given to the centre-back. While they're not the type of player to get all the media attention, modern systems have transformed the centre-back into one of the most sought-after positions, with the price tag of world-class players in this position rapidly trending upwards. This trend has been led by the rise in possession football, and the increased popularity of building from the back, meaning the ball-playing centre-back has become a core element of any successful team. The list of world-class players in this position is constantly expanding, so to get a good understanding of the different styles of play, we're going to be taking a look at three players from this graph that have their own unique approach to this role. Let's take a look. Welcome back to Football Meta. As a reminder, all stats in this video are brought to you by Soccerman, so make sure to check out their brand new X-Value platform for in-depth metrics from over 17 different leagues across the globe. The link is in the description down below. Now, before we go any further, it's important to understand the main requirements of this position. As you can guess from the name, a ball-playing centre-back is a defender who excels in ball progression. They're known for their passing range, their ability to drive the ball forward, but also their defensive qualities, and their ability to stop the opposition from creating any chances. This means they're usually very physically strong, they have great vision and are excellent under pressure at the con of usually having a very fixed position and not being too adventurous going forward. However, we'll look at some exceptions later on in the video. Their playstyle is directly linked to the increase in possession football and the high press, with their responsibility shifting from purely defensive to starting attacks. This is both during build-up, but also when the team is attacking in the opposition's half, acting as support and finding the right space to move the ball. There are, generally speaking, two different types of ball-playing centre-backs the ball player and the ball carrier. The ball player is someone who relies on their passing range to help the team progress, while the ball carrier is a centre-back who looks to break the first line themselves, pushing into the midfield and giving the team more support. A ball player would be someone like Brighton's Lewis Dunk, relying on his passing accuracy and completing the most progressive passes than any other centre-back in the league. While an example for a ball carrier would be someone like Real Madrid's Antonio Rudiger, often bursting through the first line of pressure and into the midfield ranking in the top 1% of centre-backs in the league for expected threat from carries. Now, not all centre-backs are the same, and some will have specific roles depending on the team and their personal style of play. To get a good understanding of the different styles, we're going to be taking a look at three players that have their own unique approach to ball progression. Here's a graph showing all centre-backs ranked on two metrics that help us identify their style of play. The first is progressive passes into the final third. The second is the amount of switches in play. The first player we're going to look at is someone who excels by keeping it simple, and that is Man City's Ruben Diaz, with an incredible pass completion rate, but pretty average numbers for switches and progressive passes. Ruben Diaz was crucial in Man City's season, and the majority of attacks would start through him. He boasts one of the best pass completion rates in the league, while also completing the most passes per 100 touches than any other player. But while his passing is accurate, it's rarely extremely progressive, and his style mostly allows other players to gain more of an advantage. The key word for understanding his style is patience. He rarely panics when being closed down, and invites pressure to free space for other players. When watching Man City build their attacks, one thing Diaz does is wait patiently with the ball and slowly move towards the striker. He does this because Man City want to play centrally, they want to exploit their technical midfielders, and so by moving the ball slowly towards the opposition striker, Diaz's objective is to lure him off his line and free up space for a pass forward. This forces a choice from the opposition. If they close him down, then it opens up central channels. If they don't, then he can simply push forward or move the ball out wide. Here's an example of Rashford defending well and not giving a central option. As soon as he steps out, he moves the ball out wide. While here is an example against Jadon Sancho being slightly more impatient, who rushes towards him and frees up this central pass. He does this even in his own box. For example, this clip here, rather than receiving the ball and instantly moving it forward, he waits a second longer just so Rashford can close him down before moving it back, giving the goalkeeper more time to make the play and allow Walker to pick up a position out wide. Diaz's positioning is consistently the furthest point back and in a central position, meaning he is often protected, giving his teammates an easy option if they're under pressure, and also meaning the strikers have to make an effort if they want to force a mistake. Here's an example in the Champions League final. His positioning sees Lautaro Martinez close him down, freeing a central channel into Gundogan between the lines. 
If Lautaro decided not to press, then this central pass would be a lot harder to pull off. The majority of the time is spent circulating the ball around the back line, waiting for these central options to open up. And Diaz is so effective because he never rushes this choice. He doesn't overcomplicate his passes and he never looks for the spectacular assist. However, one player that is slightly more progressive is Virgil van Dijk. The perfect hybrid of old school physical defender and modern ball playing centre back, with extremely accurate switches and long balls forward. When comparing him to other centre backs in the Premier League, he ranks second for expected threat from passes at 0.1 per game, showing how he helps the team gain ground with his long switches in play. But before we get to that, there's one thing that Van Dijk does that makes him unpredictable and always allows him to find the right pass. And that is, as ridiculous as it may sound, stopping the ball. One thing a lot of youth players do, especially during build-up, is that they let the ball roll past them as they feel this gives them more time to think of what to do. But the issue with this is that it limits their option to only one side of the pitch, and makes it easier for the opposition to close this space down. Why Van Dijk and top level players always look in control is because by stopping the ball and looking forward, they have more options of where to move the ball next, and it's harder for the opposition to predict. Here's a couple clips with Van Dijk. In this first example, he stops the ball and is looking at the striker. From this position, he could choose to move the ball either out wide or centrally. He decides to play it into Robertson, who lets it roll past him. And now he only has one option, which is a ball forward. Spurs predict this and win it back. Here's another example. Van Dijk stops the ball and squares up to the striker, giving him a number of different options. A good dummy and is able to pick out an excellent central pass. This unpredictability and his ability to play with both feet is also why his switches in play are so effective. As Liverpool are excellent at retaining possession, large segments of the match are usually spent in the opposition's half, with Van Dijk in a more central position similar to what we see with Ruben Diaz. The vast majority of his passes are from side to side, but when the moment is right, we'll look for a pinpoint switch into the winger. The main difference from a player like Ruben Diaz is also down to the team tactics. As we saw with Man City, their main objective is to play centrally before moving it out wide in the final third while Liverpool usually look to move it out wide and cut inside in the final third, given their wingers and fullbacks being their most dangerous players. For this reason, Van Dijk has the responsibility of recognising when the wingers are in an advantaged position, and will move the ball to them with incredible accuracy. But even the way he does this is hard to predict, mostly because of his body shape and his technique, meaning there is barely any backlift on his switches, which means the opposition have little time to react. He's also capable of doing this with his left foot, as we can see here with his excellent ball into space for Robertson. Van Dijk rarely pushes up, and his positioning as the furthest point back is also to provide cover when needed. As above all, he's also an excellent defender. Finally, the third player we're going to be looking at is someone who has a completely different approach compared to the previous two, and that is Inter's Alessandro Bastoni. The stats speak for themselves, and Bastoni ranks first amongst centre-backs in the Serie A for progressive passes and expected threat from passes. The key word for Diaz is patience, for Van Dijk it's unpredictability, and for Bastoni it's vision. Even when Inter are being pressed high up the pitch, you'll often see Bastoni play these incredibly long direct balls into the striker, and instantly helps the team gain ground. But even in less direct plays, he is crucial in Inzaghi's system for helping the team progress. As Inter line up in a 3-5-2, Bastoni starts as the left centre-back, giving him more freedom to push up in the inside channel. While for Diaz or Van Dijk their objective is to dictate build-up, Bastoni is looked for as the player that will get the team to transition from build-up to attack, breaking lines and picking out the forwards. Not only does he do this with his passing range, but will also carry the ball forward and break the lines himself if there's space to do so, picking up a position in the central channel and creating links with the strikers and the wing-back. In fact, by taking a look at his pass map, we can see how a lot of his more dangerous passes come from this area on the edge of the box, something rarely seen in a centre-back. However, this offensive mentality does come at a cost of his defensive ability, ranking relatively low for tackles and interceptions, compared to players in his position. Having said that, he still remains the perfect hybrid player to suit the needs of the modern game. These are just three of the best ball playing centre backs in the modern game, but let me know in the comments down below who your favourite centre back is. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out this video on automated plays, and how it's transformed the way teams look to build from the back. As always, if you enjoyed this content then please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.